Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Fred and Friends. I'm your host, Fred Schultz. And who have I got on tonight but none other than Mr. Rocky Cagnoni. Now, everybody's been telling me that I needed to hook up with this guy a long time ago, you know. And, uh, you know, I seen him at World Cup. Um, obviously, he had the neck brace on. We're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. Uh, but he's getting a lot better. You know, the guy's had a few things. You know, first, a neck brace deal. And he had a hernia operation a few weeks ago. So, you know, uh, it's going to be like the bionic man now when he's done. But, you know, I've really been looking forward to talking to him tonight. It's going to be pretty cool. Um, I got a few things I want to mention here real quick before we get into that. Uh, obviously, um, we have got the first of the WCPL tournaments coming up. And it's going to be February 10th at SC Village uh, down in Corona, California. And uh, it's going to be a one-day event. We're not going to do a two-day one. We're going to do a one-day one. It looks like the, the rain's going to leave us, so we shouldn't have a problem with the weather. It should be pretty good. So, But we got some pretty good teams coming in there. You know, I mean, you got some really heavy hitters, the Ironman, Black Sunday. Uh, you know, I mean, there's just uh, some great, great teams that are going to be there. So it's going to be a good game. And and like I say, you know, always, everybody, you know, not just for, for my tournaments, but for all tournaments, uh, when you see them happening, even if you're not going to play, get out there and show a little support. You know, let other people know that uh, you're going out to do something like that, because the more people that show up, the bigger it looks, the more people want to get involved. And that's what we want to do is build paintball, period. Plus, they're going to be shooting Vulcan paint. We all know Vulcan paint rocks. You know, so Gino got the the new makers up and running um his paint's just been fabulous you know we used it last year and the wcpls can use it all year long it's uh it's the paint you know i know there's a lot of paint out there and you know i don't bad mouth anything you know i mean uh i wish everybody good luck you know i like paintball to get bigger and better but you know i just really like the belkin paint i like the way it shoots uh you know, real quick thing, you know, last year the paint was delivered. It was like 103 degrees out and I wasn't there to get it. So it sat in a box truck for two days at 103 degrees. We took it out. I put an uh, air conditioner on it and that stuff shot like darts. Not a problem. Now, if that paint can take that, it can take anything. Believe me. So remember, which is really close, February 10th. You know, it's like a week from this coming Saturday. Down at SC Village, you're going to want to be there. And talking about SC Village real quick, um, Gio and I were talking the other day when I was down there. Gio was the owner of, of SC Village, and he wants to do a big game with me. And what he wants to do is I've been in the, the game playing paintball since 1984, so this makes it my 40th year in paintball. And it's the same thing for SC Village. It's their 40th year. So we want to do... Uh, he wants to combine with me. We're going to do a big game, uh, hopefully in September sometime. And we're going to get it set up. And he's going to take the barriers down. You know, the fields out there are just incredible. And there, there's so many different kinds of fields. He's going to take the barriers down. And we're going to get like a 1,000 people. And we're just going to have one big, huge game. Uh, so be, be looking forward to that, uh, you know, and be checking it out. Uh, we don't have the exact date yet. Um, he said it probably in September sometime, but until he fires that to me, I can't really tell you either. So anyhow, keep that in mind. That should be pretty cool. And then i got to mention that uh, Tommy Cole and the NXL is having their uh, summit trade show. And now this is going to be at the Sahara Hotel and Casino, and it's March 11th through the 13th. And, you know, Velkin's going to be there. All kinds of manufacturers are going to be there. Um you know, it's pretty much going to be the the place to hang out, to check out everything, you know, because, you know, I mean, just like Belkin, you know, not to keep talking about Belkin all the time, but they got so many new things coming out, man. I mean, they got some cool, cool markers coming out. And, uh, you know, they got one coming out that's, that's not just good for paintball. It's good for MagFed. It's, a, <laughs> I mean, it just can go so many different ways. It's absolutely great. So um, I'm looking forward to that, too, and because I am definitely going to be there. And then I got to mention the Hawaiian Open. Uh, which is actually the week after the WCPL tournament next weekend. And uh, it's in Maui and, and it's uh, the Hawaiian legends, you know, it's DJ Hanu Fox's event. And I, I wish I could make it. I, I had planned on going there, but I got so much, many other things going on. I, I, I just can't make it, but it's going to be February 16th through the 18th. And uh, 
like I say, there's a lot of good people that show up at that thing. So you get a chance, you're going to want to check it out. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Then um, real quick, I want to mention a couple of my friends that have podcasts that are going to be on tomorrow night. Uh, Steve McGuire's uh, Popular Unknown Paintball Podcast, he's going to be on tomorrow night. And also is going to be Kenny Stewart and Bill Bailey's Night at the Museum. So you're going to get a chance. You want to tune in tomorrow night to those guys. Uh, there's some pretty good podcasts. They really, really are. And uh, I support them. You know, um, like I say, you know, collectively, if we all work together, we really make paintball bigger and better. And that's what we need to do. So I keep preaching that. So and more and more people are jumping in with me and doing it. And that's exactly what we want to do is that. So let me give my shout outs real quick so I can drag Rocky out here. So I see his hand in the green room, but I don't see the rest of them. But uh, uh, hopefully he'll be chiming up here pretty quick. So I start every week with my good buddy, my my very, very good friend for many, many years, Mr. Tim Schloss. He uh, has Tiger Stripe Camouflage, and uh, he owns Gateway Paintball, which has the last of the WCPL tournaments. And it is going to be in St. Louis in August. Like I said, October. <laughs> Uh, so if you get a chance, you're going to want to go out there and check that out. That that was really a happening. I mean, last year, Jim Lively flew out there. Um, it, it was just absolutely great. Bud Orr was there. Uh, Gino was there from Belkin. I mean, it, it was like anybody that was anybody was there. It was very, very cool. Then I give my shout out every week to Mr. Dan John Colby. Uh, Mortal Air now was Air America way back in the day. Um, but uh, I've been sponsored by these guys for 30 some years. I couldn't be more proud. Uh, you know, I just uh, know the work that they put into their products, and it's just absolutely fabulous. Then my very good friend, and for many, many years also, Mr. Bud Orr. Love the guy. Uh, you know, uh, he's my big brother. He's a little older than I am. That's why I call him sir. But, you know, I love the heck out of that guy. I really do. And Mr. Tom K. He was my second marker sponsor, uh, Aragon Designs. And a Mr. Randy Camilla. Now, Randy, um, he was the editor for APG, and he's been kind of on the low for the last few years, but I'm hoping to drag him out of here pretty soon and, and talk to him. But uh, he's a great, great guy, really worked hard back in the day for paintball, terrific person. And Jerry Braun, Jerry Braun had Paintball Sport magazine back in the day, and he has Paintball Sport Field right now with Newburgh, New York, and that's the third of the WCPL tournaments is held there. Great, great field. I mean, a great, great place. I just, uh, you know, there's a lot of great fields uh, across the United States. You know, I mean, you, you've got Panhandle Paintball in Florida. And, you know, the three that I just absolutely love, SC Village, I, I think is great. Ambush Paintball Park out here is absolutely great. Uh, and then, you know, Tim Schloss's Gateway Paintball is just, uh, it's it's like a dream come true. It's just uh if you get a chance, it, it's worth driving to St. Louis to play that thing. It, believe me, it really, really is. And then, you know, paintball sport out in New York. These are some great fields, guys. And then I mentioned Ross Alexander, my very first marker sponsor with Line SI. I still have my original Bushmaster from my 15-man team days. That goes way back. Uh, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about Rocky, about some of this stuff, too, because Rocky goes back a ways. You know, I think he was still a kid when I started. Um, I'm not really sure. Maybe kindergarten, maybe first grade, something like that. We'll go, we're going to find out that in just a minute. And I got to say hi to Jim Lively. I mentioned him because two tournaments that you wanted to do back in the day, one with Jim Lively's Masters, the other with Jerry Brown's World Cup. Pretty cool. Uh, like I say, and that's what we're trying to do with WCPL is like make it uh, like a family reunion. You know, I love the NXL. I love what Tommy Cole's done. I think he's done an absolutely terrific job. Um, this is just a different venue. You know, I, there's room for all of us in this. And that's what I really, really like about uh, about the way I kind of work things. And then I say hi every week to my my buddy Gino from Belkin. And the reason I mentioned Gino is Gino does an awful lot of things behind the scenes for paintball that uh, most of you don't get to see. You know, and I, I'm privileged enough to, to kind of be on the inner circle with these guys and see what he does. And uh, he does an awful, awful lot of things for paintball. He really, really does. So he deserves mentioning every week. And plus he's got some great products. You know, I love the heck out of his paint. I really, really do. And then I got to mention my two little young guns, which I mention every week, Jaden and Mark Gong Jr. Terrific, terrific kids. Uh, absolutely are. So Rocky, I see you wandering around there in the green room. I think I'm about ready to drag you out here, buddy, if you're ready. Um, I should probably bring him out. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. 
please, everybody welcome. A guy that everybody tells me that I should have hooked up with a long time ago. Well, by God, Rock and I are hooking up right now. All right? All right. What's going on, Rocky? Hey, what's going on, Fred? How you doing, buddy? Doing good, my friend. How you doing? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. you've been yeah, through some seen... stuff, man. I got to tell you, you know, I seen you at the World <laughs> Cup and you're all like uh, RoboCop. You know, you had that yeah. thing on your neck. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. I made it 52 years with not one surgery. And then it seems like this past year I, I've had back. I mean, I literally had back to back surgeries. I had my neck fused and then I had a hernia a surgery right after it. Um, but yeah, I hope this doesn't mean I'm falling apart. But I should be good to go from here on out. Oh yeah, you're you're gonna be fine. Yeah, they they put you back together. They're just making you a better guy now, man. Yeah, you'll, you'll, oh, yeah, yeah. you'll be able to get out there yeah, and run with the gazelles. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm really glad uh, you're taking the time to join me tonight uh, because you know I've had a lot of people um, actually over the past year uh, saying you know you and Rocky should hook up. You guys would probably be a, a pretty good interview and a lot of fun. And uh, you know I talked to you at the World Cup, but you know. Um, now I got you here. You know, I just, yeah. uh, I wanted you on here earlier, but you know, I, I knew you were hurting and I knew you wanted to get rid of the neck brace and everything before you yeah. came on. So. It, it, and not only neck brace, like I, my speech wasn't good. I still had like a, uh, I was numb on one side. So like I had a, like a Rocky Balboa lip, but I'm, I'm feeling great now. Wow. You know, I mean, real- I, I'm still practicing in English, and I mean, I I got my tongue <laughs> like tight in the middle and flaps on both ends, but sometimes my mind's in there going, "What's your lips saying, man?" You know. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'm really, really glad you're on here tonight. You know, um, you played for Avalanche, am I right? I I did, I did play for Avalanche, and that was uh, that was the the golden years for me. Um, you know, it's when. Uh, we were on that good run. We won the back back world championships and I uh, got to travel all over the world with all the guys. And yeah, that was it. That was the, uh, that was the highlight. But before that, Fred, you came down, you came down to South Florida a couple of times because um, you came out when I was on nemesis, when I, before I even turned pro with, with yeah. nemesis and Ronnie Howell and, and, and the boys. Yeah. You were still a kid. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I was, uh, yeah, I was, well, I mean, now it, I guess you'd be considered old, but I was in my early twenties, but yes, I was a kid compared to what well, I know, am. I'll tell you, Rocky, you know, even at 50, you're still a kid to me. That sucks. You always be a kid. You know, I, I live with it. You know, you know, I, I know when you played on the Avalanche, you had some great guys that you played alongside, oh, um, some you know. Best. Yeah, say and some really nice guys. Right, real quick, you, you know this little guy? What's up, ah, hey. <laughs> What's up, bud? What How up, you buddy? doing? <laughs> oh, what a surprise! I I didn't expect that. Hey, oh, you I think that's here, a surprise? Man. He's nothing. Here's the big surprise. Oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> really? Ah. Oh, oh, there be pirates. There be yeah, pirates. I, I said the big surprise because I guess he's like six foot four, you know. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. barely six foot oh, anymore. Awesome. I shrunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're all shrinking, man. Right. Yeah, I mean, even Weiss is looking tall to me now. Oh, Weiss is looking good. He's living a good life, man. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah man. I tried to find out what he's drinking, man, because the guy just never gets any older. Are you in? Him and Rick Sandias. I don't know what the heck's going on with them two guys. Boy. I changed the Budweiser Zero, man. Non-alcoholic beer. Oh, I got to get a drum of that then. <laughs> you know, uh, and I hear it makes you smart because it made Budweiser. Right? Yeah. But yeah. Up, <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe that's too quick. I don't know. So Rocky, I thought you'd like to have these two guys on here tonight. Oh right here. man, it, 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 great, great, great two pickups for the show. Yeah. For sure. they, they'll make it way more entertaining being here. Yeah, uh, I don't know, happy. man. <laughs> I don't know, Rocky. You're pretty entertaining. This is the um, only way I get to talk to Rocky. We never talk anymore, so it's good. It's good. Yeah, well, I'm I'm glad we could link up. You know, uh, Rick Wilcox, you know, got a hold of me today, and. Uh, he was telling me, he goes, yeah, 
he goes, Billy's really a good friend. And Billy played, uh, he says, Rocky'd play up in front. And Billy was kind of like his, his back man back there yeah. taking care of him. And I said, yeah. I said, Heavy uh, artillery. What do you yeah. think? And then, you know, and then I asked uh, uh, Weez to be on, you know, because Dave and I, we go back uh, a long, long way. As a matter of fact, there, there's pictures of Weez and I, and he looks like he's in kindergarten. I'm his, his teacher or something. I don't know, man. <laughs> pretty much sucks. I had hair back then and everything. It was pretty cool. Yeah, um, so, did, so, so did I, Fred. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> this is from riding my Harley, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Love it. Hey, Love right it. on. Oh, you fit right in. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow you know you guys all played together on avalanche and uh i, I wasn't i wasn't on avalanche i played oh, on Ava i played on avalanche veterans with them a couple of times did you um, and then uh but me and rocky played together several teams different tour de yeah. force black diamond that was that was uh they were reboots we used those names in the new 10 man when they brought back the 10 man format yeah right and uh, and we also played as Avalanche veterans, a few other teams too. I don't even remember, but yeah, we yeah, two of the four misfits, misfits, Pursuit, misfits. So. misfits yeah. yeah, oh yeah, yeah. 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 played on misfits in Sacramento. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah we, and Dave and I got to play together on the misfits. That was awesome. Yeah. yeah, that was right when I just came out. I think that was my first tournament back, so I was still pretty green. You know, I took thirteen rust. years off. Right. Yep. Yep. That was Absolutely. awesome. You picked, you picked you picked it right up back though, Weez. I mean, look yeah. how many how many events have you won since then? You got a lot of wins since then, dude. Under your belt. I, I do, man. <laughs> Just in the last uh, year and a half, I think I got eight rings already. So it's it's been yeah, good. Know, it's been a lot of fun. You're cranking them out, baby. I love it. I love I'm it. I'm trying. I'm trying. Grinding with the best of them. Yeah, you still yeah. play. You still play at a pretty high level. You, uh, yeah, you do really, really good. That's for sure. But we're gonna, we want to get Rocky back out. You know, I would actually like to to hook up and play alongside Rocky and and. Uh, you, Dave, you know, we're going to do a, a big game at uh, SC, maybe in uh, September. It's her 40th year. So, you know, and it's my 40th year in paintball. So we're going to get together and, and try to get a thousand people and do a, he's going to take down the barriers, going to do a big game at SC. Nice. Maybe we could all get together and play arm in arm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Bill, down, you're not, I'm you're not too far. That. Yeah, it's two hours. Bill, you're what, two hours? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You're not yep. far. You're San Diego, Diego. So. Yeah, we could we could fly Rocky out here, right? Yeah, I, I would. Uh, yeah, I might even take a road trip so I can bring my my right hand man with me. I need yeah, a that good would, road trip. On. You know that is absolutely funny you said that too because you know I fly all over, but you know I'm going to a road trip. I love road trip, and I really do. yeah. I'm yeah, I'm, my, I'm, my, I'm a driver. Yeah, so am I. With my wife, we just we just roll. So anyhow, um, yeah, I'm going to go to the tournament in uh, Florida. Uh, at Panhandle Paintball, and it's going to be uh, in April, and so we're going to drive down there for that one. Yeah, so that's I'm going to come up for that. I'm going to come up for that one. I missed the, the one last year. Oh, I'm is that right? Up. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to come up this year. Um, I don't know if I'm going to uh, be good enough to actually play, but I'm going to come hang out at least because it's. I mean, it's right in my it's my state, right? It's on the right in the. Right in the panhandle, so it's, it's yeah, and, and you know Dan company. Colby, you know Dan Colby, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's Danny's field. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know it was his field. Yeah, him and Steve Prisco, um, they own that, that field together. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So yeah, you know, it, Rocky, what, what's one of your best memories um, of of hanging out and and playing <laughs> alongside Weez? Oh God! Not not God. best memories because I know there's a lot of bad ones, but you know I want a good one out here, man. Oh, man, I mean, I think not 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 only just winning the, the events, just hanging out. We had some we had some really good times because there was like different back then on the team. Even though we, we were a team, we had a kind of like different cliques. But uh, like me and Weez and Porman would. Most of the time, just hang out in the hotel room and shoot the shit and and pound beers. Well, you guys pounded <laughs> beers. I I, I oh. never I I have never drank. I don't like beer. Bush mills. You were bush mills back in bush those mills, days. That's right. I was yeah, um, Irish. Yeah, Irish. just yeah, just uh, just traveling around. Um, man, there's so many memories. Um, uh, how about the time at the Hard Rock Cafe at Sky Dome? You and me. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, that, was, that was we can't get into detail but we had some good times 
it's a kid show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just helping not, him remember, you know, he is old and he's got crutches and a cane. You know, I, I knew that was coming. Rocky, is that there's the time so many. You went numb? What's that? Is that the time your legs went numb? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's, that's the time my legs went numb. Yeah, we got to keep the kids for sure. Uh, um, yeah, I, uh, I think he, but, he went but, completely numb. <laughs> but Fred, you can attest to this. I mean, there's there's it's there's been so many awesome times that they. Billy, just you been playing? Uh, they just yeah, there together. has been. What? What? I'd go out and play walk ons for fun, and it was a blast. It was an absolute yeah. blast. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. I've been, but I've been running the duels. You know, the joust and duels. We're trying to get that to hook in San Diego here and get people going, and they're loving it. Didn't mean to cut Rocky yeah. off. Sorry. No, no, no! You're good. Uh, yeah, you you were doing that. You're doing that with Ollie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How oh, cool! Yeah. yeah, it was awesome. We did the uh, the summer tour, eight right. stops in eight weeks, and uh, it was a uh, that was a grind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a it was a paintball odyssey. It was a real life paintball odyssey. It was great. It was yeah. once in a lifetime opportunity. I was super glad to be involved. So yeah, they're they're great guys. You know. Uh, and Alex Frazier and you know, you know, and Ryan, all of those guys started on my field years ago. They were oh, just yeah. a bunch of oh yeah, they were a bunch of troubled kids, man. Oh god. <laughs> well, hey, you know, I now. gotta tell you, you know, you think Weez was a handful. These guys were really a handful, yeah. But yeah, they all they all started back on my field way back in the day. So, you know, because I started Mare Island out there and then oh, Snapchat hey, took it over. Uh -huh. All right, nice. I love it. So, I, I didn't so, know yeah. you started that, Freddie. Absolutely, my friend. Wow, I love Absolutely. I started, I, you know, the jungle. I started the jungle first. Yeah, Carver you know Bob's what? Field, right? Yeah, Carver Bob's Field. And then I started uh, um, the one at uh, Mare Island. Keith Kissel and I were the very first two to walk on there. The Thule's were like, God, they were like 12 feet tall. And so mm -hmm. I had to cut past through it. I had to get it ready because Jim Lively, uh, we were doing a, a tournament out there at the Bay City Open with Jim Lively. So, you know, I got the fields ready and we did it, man. And then afterwards, I started traveling so much that Carpet Bob took over the one out there because my partner, Ricky, you know, he didn't want to do it anymore. And I was never in town. I was uh, by then I started getting popular and, and was traveling all the time. So uh, then Sinatra took over Mare Island. So, yeah, that, but I started all those fields. You know, when I started out here, there was only one place you could go buy a marker, and it was a Splatmaster, and it was Honest John's Gun Shop here in town. <laughs> there was no, you know, nowadays these kids don't understand. You know, there's fields everywhere. There's stores Internet. everywhere. Yeah, but yeah. back in the day, there was none of this. I mean, none of it. And then you'd ask people, you know, hey, man, where can I go get a Splatmaster gun? You know, and they go, oh, what are you, a militant? You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, why are you wearing camo? You know, it just was, uh, it was just interesting back in the day. People don't understand, you know. But Orr and I, we talk about it all the time. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but Orr was, and I work pretty hard. I almost, I almost did it play because one of the first times my mom dropped me off, um, it was, it was an outlaw field. It was ran by this guy named Choker. He he played on the Shadow Warriors. It was, uh, this was Termin. It was back in the Terminator days, and oh, uh, Florida Bushmasters. Um, they were yep. all practicing out there. I remember it was down a dirt road, and we turned down that dirt road, and. All my mom seen was a bunch of old dudes and camos, and she was like, "Oh hell no!" I said, "Mom, I'm telling you, it looks worse than it is. All these guys are the nicest guys in the world." And I remember she dropped me off, and and uh, when she came back, she actually hung out. And but at first, she's like, "Oh no way, I'm leaving you out here." But uh, yeah, that's how it was, you know. All oh yeah, dressed in, in camos, no chronos. We'd have to shoot at like the Maluka trees. To see how far it would go in, and you know, if it would go real deep, I'll uh, turn it down. If it would go barely in, ah, oh, it's about right. Let's keep it around. Yep. around Your there. tree, we Toronto. Shot, yeah, yep. we shot bottles. If you weren't breaking a bottle, you were good to go. <laughs> oh Last yeah, bottle. I mean, we started. We were playing with sunglasses. You know, that's that's what you had for goggles. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it goes way back. But you know, 
the, a turning point too, you know, because when I got into it and I, I started traveling and stuff and talking to people about it, I think a big turning point was when we did the show at uh, MGM Disney down there on New York Street. We did that, uh, you know, and that brought an awful lot of people into it because, you know, having Disney involved and ESPN2 was involved, a lot of people looked at it in a different light. You yeah. Know, so it, that uh, that was a big turning point. But, you know, Bud Orr and I, him and I traveled a lot together. And I got to tell you, we talked to we were blue in the face back in the day. But it all worked out, and you know, I, I love it, and you know, and I love having you guys on here tonight too. You know, I mean, you guys are all a big part of paintball. You are, you know, Rocky. You got a, a heck of a name out there. Weiss has well, had a heck of a name forever. Yeah. You know. Well, paintball. I mean, paintball was a big part of our lives, right? It, yeah. It's not that so much that we were a big part of it. It, it was paintball because when we started, just like you, we didn't know where it was going we 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 did it for the love of it and yep. it so happened that it turned out that we got to get free stuff and travel the world and but we didn't like nowadays kids go into it kind of knowing what you know they're, they're almost expecting it we just went with the flow and it just right. turned out the way it did yeah so no, you're right. came if a paycheck came yeah. or a free flight came we yeah, were like paycheck. Oh, yeah, i go. remember we're when i got my weekend. first Yep, exactly. I remember, uh, Fred. I my big first upgrade was getting your cradle, your Fred Schultz cradle for my Air oh, America really? one fourteen, oh, wow. and mm -hmm. I had that on my auto mag. It just like it's funny how things just progressed and and just evolved organically for us back then. Right. You know, I, I'll tell you a quick story. You know, uh, Marcus Davis, a very good friend of mine for. Yeah. Many, many, good many guy. years, Real you know, guy. I because I was one of the first guys to play in England. It was still illegal there. We had the Bobbies come out and try to arrest us. But uh, we had a guy with us uh, named Paul Wilson. He was a court magistrate, thank God. And uh, he talked him out of it. But anyhow, Marcus Davis, one day I was over there and I was sitting by the pool at one of the motels over there. And he came down to him and I were sitting there talking. And he asked me, he goes, you know, he says, I want to be the Fred Schultz of England. What does it take? And I told him, I said, anybody can be anybody i said the whole thing is just be friendly to people because back in the day a lot of those guys that that i'll i'll say they were pros back then but you know kids would go up to talk to them they wouldn't give them five i mean they would just shine them on like they were really really something and all of those guys faded out but you notice all the guys that treated people like you should treat people ended up getting bigger and better in the sport of paintball yeah. You know, Weiss is one right there too. You know, I never seen Weiss I, shine a kid on to come up and talk to him. Yeah. No, that that was uh that that was actually one of the not one of the reasons, but that that exactly happened to me. I remember being in Pittsburgh one year, and I just I waited, I waited for this one team. I'm not going to say any names to be finished, and I went up with uh, had a page ripped out of an APG magazine, and I went up and. I was like, hey, could you sign this? And apparently they just lost. And the guy was like, give us a goddamn second. We just lost. And I went, I went what a dick. And, yeah, and yeah. I wasn't even a kid. I was like like young young 20s. And I was like, man, wait till you yep. leave this baseball field and <laughs> whack your kneecaps off. Talk to me like that. And right after that, I went, hey, if I ever become, you know, big in a paintball or – Oh, never, ever do some some dirty like that. You know, it was weird. Yeah, no, it, and, that's what I'm talking and, about. You know, those yeah, guys just fade was, away, though. You know, they're they they end up being nothing. Period. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and it's paintball. Let's let's be honest. You might be cool in paintball and be the top, but <laughs> it's paintball. You're on I mean, the yeah, street. You know, You're Rocky, just a regular Joe. You know, it's just like your mom. You, you say your mom went out there. Well, you know, other people go out and they want to see what's going on when they, they hear all the racket and stuff like that. They yeah. see someone coming off the field yelling and screaming and swearing. You think they're going to want their kid to go out and do it? You think they're going to want to go out and do it? Not at all. But they see people coming off the field, you know, high five and had a good time, win, lose, or draw. They're going to they're gonna want to get involved. They're going to that's how you build paintball. You know, you can be the best player in the world, but you know, if you're a dick, you're not helping our yeah. sport. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Especially yeah. now because the, the age, the age of kids are way, 
low, well, younger than when we started, right? These kids yeah. are starting out at seven years old, you know? Yeah. So uh, you got to be mindful of that. And I mean, we want paintball to grow. That's what, that's what because we love it, right? This is what we do. So that's why uh, you're on my people, show. I only put passionate guys on my show. <laughs> guys, no, seriously, guys are really. You got a, you got a good line. Like the sport, yeah. so. yeah, there's a lot of passion in this room right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe too much. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> look, at, look, at, look at this good looking guy over here. You see him? Oh, we. Yeah. yeah. I got the old avalanche. You guys yeah. all signed it. I don't know where I found it in the attic. Yeah, look at that up there. See that? Oh yeah, well, that's a good. Oh, that's a good. Diablo one. paintballs. Yeah, well, yeah. the avalanche one. Yeah, I got. Yeah. I mean, I've got my whole wall. It's it's almost done. Yeah. You know, you make the, the little you show, you show that Diablo paintball. You know, I shot that up at Mike Leon's place. Remember that? Yeah. It, you yeah. played at Mike Leon's place, right, Weiss? Yep. Yeah, because I think he that's the paint that he carried uh out there too was Diablo. That that hellfire, yeah. man, it it shot just amazing, man. Wow. And it was so freaking bright. It covered you. I mean, it was, I mean, Billy, you shot it back in the day too. I mean, there's nothing nine, like that paint, man. Nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we'd, we'd be out. I mean, Richmond played with us, Rocky, you know, back in the yeah, day. Well, we, we remember tournaments. he made he made us uh, our, that, that avalanche hellfire in the suitcases. We had that all yep. that our own color that that blue yep. and silver shell, or I think it was, or something. It was so, like yeah. a buck forty a case here in San Diego when you could get it. It was, it was yeah. like hundred fifty bucks a case when you could get it here in San Diego at the time. Oh, I remember yeah, some of that pink field, man. I think I still got some old uniforms that it still wouldn't wash out of. Right. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Back in the day, you know, before it was water based. Yeah, when it was oil based, yeah. the old Nell spot paint. That's what I'm yep. talking about. Yep. 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 Yeah, that stuff was uh, that was just miserable. You'd wash it off, and you could still see. You'd wash it, but you could still see where the stain was half the time, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I was on a team called the Muffs, and uh, there was a team with Jessica Sparks and them called the Puffs. I don't know if you guys knew about them, mm -hmm. but they made them a special paint, and they put Chanel 5 in the ball, okay? <laughs> you got, oh, my God. I mean... It almost it made your eyes water when you got hit with one of them paintballs. It just smelled so bad, and you couldn't wash it out of your clothes. You'd go wash it, and you'd put it on, and you'd still smell like a French. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was just uh, that stuff was miserable, man. And actually, I still have a little baggie of them balls out here. So yeah, oh, but I, I treat them. I don't want them to fall anywhere. My wife would be all over me about that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> So Rocky, what are you doing now that you're healing up? Um, still, I'm really not doing anything. I can't, I haven't got cleared to go back to work. Um, but I have been working with Buddy and and Ed Portman because you know we were bringing Dark back, which is a, is the old brand that kind of sponsored Avalanche. And uh, yeah, I'm just kind of helping out with that, and uh, I'm just healing up. Uh, to, I'm leaving for tomorrow to go down to Mexico for that ICPL. Just to go hang out and and shoot the shoot the crap with the boys and uh, yeah, I'm still doing the events. I'm just not I'm not playing. I'm just going yeah. there to hang out. That ICPL that's next weekend too. It not this weekend, but the following weekend, no, right? No, it's 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 this weekend. I leave it I, I I leave here at like three a.m. to drive to Orlando to catch my flight in the morning at six. Oh dear. Oh wow. So, and is that Cancun yeah, Rock this weekend? Yeah. The Cancun one. Misfits playing? No. No, oh, man, you guys won no, it. Just... They won, you guys won it last year. Yeah, um, but we had, you know, like everything else, uh, got to pick and choose what events, you know, to go to because yep. uh, yeah. we're we're kind of lucky because you know Matt Davis does a great job with with team funds and stuff, so everything's pretty much paid for. It's just we got to get transportation, so. You we take a, a poll, you know. If we go to this event, we're not going to have funds for this event. So we got it's you know it's walking the tightrope kind of thing. You have yeah, to yeah. 
you know, you could do something every weekend if that's what you wanted. Yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. That, that's how jammed exactly. up it is. But so you're right about picking and choosing. You, you, know, you just you, you have to and what 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 the team expense could cover. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and, you and know, that's not even including all the big games to go to, because that's one of my funnest things, you know, to, to absolutely. get a little break. The big games are I love it. Um, I, I'm with you 100%. Team, yeah. And I like doing the big games because I actually go there and camp out for the whole weekend. You know, you cut loose. You don't have to leave the field. Um, it's fun. Uh, well, there's no real pressure on you. You know, you're, yeah. you're going, you know, you, you get to meet a bunch of new people you normally wouldn't meet. You get to yeah. go play paintball with, with a bunch of people shooting the crap out of you. But, you know, there's nothing really on the line. There's no pressure. No. You know, that's what I love about big games. It's relaxing. Submission. Yeah, boy, if you guys could make that one out here, and I think September is when he's going to do it. That would be awesome. And you said in September. Yeah, I think that's when Gio wants it. When I was talking to him the other day, he's going to get a date out. He told me by the end of this week, but he says maybe in September sometime. So I'd love to. I'd love to go back to SC. I haven't been there for God forever. <laughs> I I yeah, to well, if you if you can't if you can't Back drive, you let me know. You know, we'll work something out and uh, get you on a plane out here, or put you in a big box and put a stamp on it. And have you <laughs> <laughs> Fred Geely, <laughs> Murphy bed right here. The Murphy bed's ready. Right <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's right. I got I got a free hotel room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I have my CPAP, and I got my CPAP now, trucker. So <laughs> I won't keep the whole house up. Oh, thank God. <laughs> just, just, just stay out of the tub, Rock. Just stay out. Of yeah, the tub. Right. I, I haven't done that. I have I, I couldn't. I haven't done a tub in three months because they wouldn't let me <laughs> submerge any of my wounds. Uh, how, how, so. If you had to wager a guess, Rock, how many tubs or hotels have you flooded? Oh. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I think like, that that just answered I've been it. Been six, six, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was I was gonna say probably about ten or eleven. <laughs> yeah. I, I did it really good. I did really good, really good damage. South Africa was one of the best, and Trucker was there for one of them too. A really good one, yeah. or a couple yeah, of them. Back in the yeah. day, man, I remember we used to put the the. Get a box of Tide and put in there in a hot tub. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they still do it at Cup. They still they still they bubble do. up that, that fountain yep. like an ongoing thing. Yeah, uh, it was good to see you at Cup there. I was really surprised. You know, I, I feel very, I, I really wasn't going to mention this, but, you know, Ed Poorman, you know, uh, his son, that just uh, that yeah. broke my heart yeah. when I heard that. That was... Uh, one of the saddest things out there. Ed's one of the nicest guys that uh, yeah. out there in paintball. He's even nicer than Weez, you know, and that's pretty damn nice. <laughs> so, uh, well, that was part of our crew, me, Weez, and Ed. Yeah, we, yeah. We'd always, like we'd literally, <laughs> you know, the, the rest of the team would go out and do their clubbing or whatever they did, and we'd yeah. always hang out. You know, Not would stay with us every now and then too. So, yeah, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, little Alex was man. He was he was a hell of a good kid. He so. played with Avalanche as well too. Yeah, yep. yep. The rebirth. But yeah, that was I remember shame, when you yeah. did some photo shoots with him for the magazine. Yeah, for Warp Sports. yeah, back yeah. in the for the for the Warp Sports ad. Both Alex and Aaron, both yep. of the kids. Yeah, you know it. Yeah, you know Aaron Carter is gone now. You know yep. Joe West, Joe West, Jane J. Barrels. Yep. yep. You know, I mean, uh, it's just uh, that's why you want to treat the people that are involved in, in paintball and really work really hard at it. You know, you want to treat them decent, you know, and that's why I do my shout outs at the beginning of the show, you know, because I've had people go, why do you mention all those guys? And I think, you know, paintball would probably still be here, but I don't think it would be here like it is right now. These guys were inundators back in the day. They worked so hard. At absolutely everything. And, you know, back in the day, you know, you know, because Bud and, and Bud Orr and Tom K and I and I were, were real good friends. And these guys used to sit in a hotel room back in the day. And it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to copy this. These guys would swap ideas to make things better for both their products. You know, yeah, and you don't see that now. You know, now everybody wants their piece of the pie. 
and they don't understand if they work together, the pie would be so damn big, their piece would be great, you know? So it's just, uh, yeah, it is. There's just a lot of infighting, you know? That's like out here, you know, one team will play at a field, but if they go play at another field, then that field won't let them play there anymore. You know, what's with that? You know, it's just... Uh, that's just not how it should be. Period. So pretty it's retarded. Po- yeah, it's a pretty retarded, sad politics stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't get into any of that. And I tried yeah, to get out of it, man. All those years, just, just tell yeah, me where we're it, playing. Tell not, me when I need to get on a yeah. plane, and uh, tell me when we're going home, and don't let yeah. Chris Lasoya drive. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I stay out of it, but I try to bring people together to kind of work against that too. You know, so absolutely. What's your feelings on it, Bill? Sorry, Jake. Yeah, what's your, what's your feelings on that? You know, people not really working together, trying to. I don't you even know, know how to explain it. It's just go ahead. It, 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 I mean, I don't want to go get too long winded on it, but I think a big part of it in paintball being just the nature of the beast. Paintball players are aggressive, predatory people. I mean, can be, especially on the field. And some people can't separate or di- differentiate that from the field to and maybe they feel like they have to be that way in business i don't know but if you look at nature what works best right a symbiotic relationship so if you you know you guys work together collab you know teamwork makes a dream work and that sounds goofy but it's a real deal you know i mean we've seen it we're all truth we're all pirates and we've seen what the pirates have done you know the mdp that all is a collaboration of all of us the old paintball guys you know trying to reach out to the rest of the world and uh it's gone very well, to be honest. I mean, for a new concept, and we've done a lot of good. There's been a lot of bullshit drama with it, too. But it's been awesome, and it's just added to it. 100% came from the Brotherhood paintball vibe, you know? So, no, yeah. oh, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I preached that. I, I preached that thing for years, man. <laughs> you know, I just, uh, I just so passionate about the sport. You know, you just want more people to get in the sport. But, you know, when even the people that don't get in the sport, you want them to look at it in a good light. You don't want to, them to look at it like you're some kind of savage going out and doing this, you know? So I, that's what I really appreciated about this concept that Oliver, I mean, it is a very mature and very well-conceived idea that he came up with. And when you really watch it, like there, there was a, con- uh, a contestant, one of our heroes, Todd Boyer, he, uh, he flew out Blake Yarber and they played matches to drill for him to come out for the championship for his shot at the 10 grand. Right. And their matches, they didn't need a referee, and they were playing with full intensity. But as soon as one of them even thought they touched the other or if they thought they were hit, they called it, they held up, they checked themselves out. And if they were hit, they were hit, and they were calling honest paintball on each other, which does not exist, right? You know, if, <laughs> if, if you really want to see the game elevate, because, you know, I'm going to sound like a super nerd right now, but this is a, a modern martial art that's been born, and people don't even realize it, you know? Yeah. And because uh, it has all, if you look up the characteristics, the definitions of the words, it's all there. Paintball is all there. You know, it's a discipline. Hey, you know, really? Yeah, that was a real good way to put it, too. You know, it, that's what bothers me. You know, when I go out and I do these tournaments and I go, oh, you only got eight refs. Well, you mm-hmm. know, if I need a ref for each guy, then that means you guys aren't playing very fair to start with, you know. Yeah. And, you know, I've, I, I've never entered any game that I played that I didn't want to win. But when I didn't win, I didn't cheat to win and I didn't didn't say, you know, be mad at the other guy because he beat me. You know, it was just his day and it wasn't mine. It, it is what it is. You yeah, know, I yeah. mean, you, you look at God can't even make everybody happy. You know, I mean, so how now are you going to do it? You know, <laughs> no, and that's but what I do appreciate about that the one on one tour and what we were able to do with it is because you put so many eyes on just two guys it creates a lot more honesty, right? You know, so you're, you're not always going to be perfect, but there was very few calls that got by us. Calls got by us, but very few, very few. Yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. You know, it's it's really hard to get good refs, too. It's, yeah. uh, that's not easy, you know. That, hardest, you'd like to always get a ref to plays tournaments. Yeah. Hardest yeah, game it's an un- it's an ungrateful job too when you're rough. Uh, those, you know, the, oh, you, yeah. you, get, you get yelled at, you get, you know, you get shot at. You don't get, sh- you don't get to shoot back, and I mean, it sucks, dude. I mean, the verbal abuse. We, yeah, the verbal abuse that you, you get because remember we used to remember back in the beginning of the 
and PPL, we, we'd all ref, right? This yep, team would yep. ref this, We've this one that. tournament. I hated it, man. It's, it's <laughs> I mean, I hated it. I did not I even know that yet. <laughs> yeah. And I, and we always had to ref, uh, Chicago or Chicago. Atlantic. Yeah, Chicago. We, I think we ref Atlantic City once. And I was, luckily, I was on the, uh, on the, one of the fields with Saransky, uh, who else did I have? I had Saransky. I think Soy was on. So they really took charge. I just, I was the flag, flag base guy, ref. You know? And I, I remember I'd always, I'd always give them my speech. I said, listen, man, I said, I'm going to let you guys play, but if you make me, you know, make me look dumb, I'm going to start pulling your armbands and it's going to be a Velcro party. So there you play, you don't make me look stupid. Um, and you'll be fine. But, yeah. Yeah. You know, one good one good team that really refs, I, I think, are some of the best refs out there. And that's the Master Blasters. Um, and we got oh, yeah. Kevin Donaldson watching right now. You know Kevin, right? Yeah. The Donaldson yeah. don't mess around. He he puts he puts a good crew together, and he every, does. Every he does. Yeah, like, Rosie, uh, boy, Rosie. You know. Oh, gee, forget about it. Yeah. No one yeah. wants, no one wants to screw up and throw me. Do it, do it right side, Rosie, on, on the other side. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> on the other tape. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that brings definitely brings back some memories, no doubt. There, um, it's the MPPL sign you got behind it. I was one of the first guys that made the call to get the people down there to to put that thing together. And, yeah. and I remember one one real funny thing is we're sitting there, right? And uh, it took us like three days to put it together because we were working on rules and all this other crap. And uh, Billy Garner stands up and he goes, we're working on rules. And he goes, well, what about wearing pantyhose? And I mean, everybody's jaw just dropped. And we're like, what? He goes, yeah, pantyhose. And the reason that the All-Americans wore the pantyhose is because of the ticks in uh you know in the woods the oh, chicks could not sense. get through yeah the chicks came, but you know when it first came out man that was the quietest i think i seen <laughs> I that bet. meeting yet <laughs> nobody knew what the hell to say you know <laughs> but yeah that you know the guy, really... you know who really started the nppl was steve davidson he called yeah. me up and he had the idea and he called me up and he goes, I can't get all the teams. They won't, they won't listen to me. He goes, will you call and talk to them? So I called and talked to him and boom, we all met three days later. We had the NPPL. Yep. So, and it worked good it, for it, years, you know, Steve Davidson used to live pretty much right down the street from me in Florida. He lived in, uh, he was out of Flagler beach area. Back, he back still in the... lives in Florida. Yeah. I don't know if he still lives in Flagler, but yeah, he's always been a Florida guy. Yeah, he lives, he lives with his mother him. there someplace. He takes care of her. Yeah. So, yeah. And yet another one we, we lost to, Hollywood. You know, yeah. People, did, yeah. people did not know that he passed oh, away last man. year. Yeah, wow. that was another. And he's he, he was always a staple at every event. And, yep. you know, he was always there wearing his tuxedo. His, his and suit, I, yeah. Yeah, man, he was, he was a character, man. He was, he was the nicest guy in the world, too. And, man, he had some stories. He oh, had yeah. some stories. So. Absolutely, yeah. He was a very cool guy. You know, I just, uh, yeah, I, I like mentioning all these guys because they, they meant a lot to the sport back in yeah. the day, you know, and it's a shame that they're gone now. You know, it, it, but, you know, I, I, we're not going to all live forever. That's why I always push these young guns, you know, the these kids, because they're the future of paintball. If paintball is going to survive and get bigger and better, you know, these kids are going to be the future of it. You know, and the way I see the parents bringing up the young guns right now, I think is just fabulous. I just, uh, I mean, it's all about attitude. These kids, I mean, some of these kids rock. Oh, my God. They are absolutely great little players. And they're young. I mean, you're I'm talking nine, ten years old, eleven years old. I know. Oh, yeah. Grinding, grinding with chips. adults. They're all yeah. adults. Hammering it. With yeah. Bad. In Texas, we had an eleven year old compete and he made it to the second stage of the rounds. I mean, he was he beat up a couple of people. <laughs> you know, it, was, it was it was awesome to watch. You know, I mean, it's so awesome to see how the infrastructure that exists these days, it's evolved, you know, in, in some places, there's great camps running, you know, so. Well, and, uh, and even, a, even with the women, Billy, I mean, having the, the girls out there, even at the young age too, I'm seeing it on both ends, you know, not just on the pro side, 
but you know, I mean, back in our days, you you had the Jessica Sparks and 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 a few others, but that was Unicorn. it. That was really there. That was it. Now there's now there's girls all over the place. It's awesome. Yeah, I love it. yeah, yeah they're, absolutely they're, right. Yeah. yeah, I think I think the only really tournament team back in the day was uh, Billy Garner's wife played on one. Uh, um, you know, Karen, she, uh, Karen. Uh, Tui's wife. Karen. Tui's Karen wife. Barber. Yeah, Tui's yeah. wife. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yes, absolutely right. Yeah. Ex wife, yeah. Well, right. they're all ex wives now. Wife. Um, but you know, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, Tui's yeah, uh, another one we lost. Yeah, yeah. Tui was a good guy too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he he did he pass away? Yeah. Yeah, he he, he passed uh, probably about twelve years ago. 10 wow, years I never ago, knew that. Yeah. 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 You know, another one too. You know, I my co-captain for years was Bart Hildebrand. You know, uh, a great player, but just an absolutely funny guy that i mean he was terrific and you know then i didn't talk to him for years and then i heard he passed away like five or six years ago mm. so i never forget Why? one night we're we're in tennessee and he goes and buys this big big ass hershey bar i mean this thing was huge right so we're in his room and he's sitting there and he's you know starting to fade out a little bit and i said yeah i'm gonna go to my room i'll see you in the morning so anyhow we go to wake him up in the morning, and he fell asleep with that damn chocolate bar. He took the wrapper off the whole thing. And he fell asleep with it on, right? I mean, it looked like he crapped over his entire bed. I mean, it, it was just chocolate all over everything, all over him. And we go in, and he's standing there going, oh, my God, what am I going to do? He's looking at the bed. <laughs> Oh, that that, that that was that's so when you should have put some beef bouillon in a shower and told me hey, go take a quick shower. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> or, like or Rich die. The next two days. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah, that I ever know, did that to somebody. I got to tell you, back in the days, you know, uh, you know, and I, I don't talk about it much because I don't want these young kids to get the idea. But you know, we had a riot. I'm sorry, we just had so much fun messing with each other. You know, it was, mm -hmm. uh, it was great. We. <laughs> A real good one. I go to there was a guy named Mike Gobi played on my team. So constant pursuit. We go back to Tennessee to play the Masters. So anyhow, we go we go in like three days early. He had his wife. I had my wife, and we were going to go bum around. So we're up there, and I'm talking to receptionist, you know, and she's just a little cutie and stuff. And I'm just messing around, and she, and she goes, "Oh, you guys had a paintball team, honestly? Yeah, we're constant pursuit." She goes, "Oh, we got another paintball team coming in too." And I go, "Yeah, you're probably going to have a bunch of them." She goes, yeah, this is the Iron Man. I go, oh, you haven't heard yet, huh? <laughs> and she goes, no, why? And I go, well, I said, I don't know. And so anyhow, so we leave. So I don't think nothing of it, you know. We come back in, you know, after a couple of days. We're out and we come back in. And here's Bobby and all the Iron Men are sitting in, in the lobby, right? And I mean, they got their girls with them and everything like that. And I walk up and I go, hey, Bobby, what's going on? He goes, some asshole canceled our rooms. <laughs> I go, what? And he goes, they canceled our rooms. I go, let me see what I can do for you. So I go up to, to the counter, right? And, you know, Mike Govey, he walks out of the motel. He's scared out of his mind now, you know. He leaves. So I go up to the girl. I go, did you cancel the rooms? And she goes, yeah, you said that they were going to have problems. I didn't say they weren't coming. I just said I was just messing with you. She goes, oh, my God. I go, you need to get them some rooms. <laughs> true story, true story. So anyhow, she goes, well, I can't. Everything's full. And I go, hey, you cancel their rooms. Cancel somebody else. You know, all of them, you, all of them and the girls, they got them three rooms. They stayed, they stayed in three rooms the whole day. And we're driving down the road. And I always had a white town car. That's what I always rented was a white town car. Right. So we're driving it. And all of a sudden, this van pulls alongside of us. And my wife goes. Red, you better look out. That van looks like it's going to tip over on us. And it was all the Ironmen, and they all went to one side of the van, giving me the look like that. And the van was going to almost tip it over. And I'm like, oh, crap. But back so, yeah, in those we, days, I mean, Freddie, back in those days, you could go up and say, hey, I lost my key to room, blah, blah, blah. And they give you another key, and you go in. Oh, yeah. Tennessee was oh, great yeah. because oh, yeah. you, you had the remember. bait shops everywhere. So, so we go grab the yeah, crickets absolutely. and say, oh, yeah, you I'm in just... room uh, 302, you know, and uh, go mess with the black diamonds with the crickets. black crackers. I remember that. <laughs> Put like 10 bags of crickets in their room, dude. Yeah. <laughs> in the <Crickets>. sheets. And... <laughs> What about what about leaving leaving the the garbage can full of water on their door so when they yes. open it up and just just inside? I did that dude. to Jerry Braun, and then and then yeah. I went and TP'd his car, and he wouldn't come out. He was pissed. 
Yeah, I, 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 gotta tell you, I could get into a million stories like that. But, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I just don't want to give these kids the idea that. But, <laughs> yeah, don't give them any, honest, any ammo. I'll be honest with you. You know, the other day a guy told me, he goes, you know, Fred, he goes, paintball's really cool right now. But he goes, back then was really the golden days of paintball. And, you know, the more he I thought about it, him saying that, it just, it was more like, um, it was more like the Raiders back in the day, you know, the the football team. You know, I mean, back in the day, they go out and drink all night and come in and just kick, kick ass all day at, at playing Damn football, friends. you know? Yeah, and, and that's kind of how we were back in the day, you know? Everybody yeah, be I out mean, there getting hammered and next day out there just rocking away. And that's what it was all about, though. It was all about having a good time. And Rocky, you know, hit on it early on in the conversation. Yeah. It was just let's go out. We we love the play, and let's go out and hang out with all our friends. And you know, for me, I, I said it's like living in a small town, but you know, we all live so far away. And when we got together, it was like family. And we just go yeah. out and yeah. you know, go drink and party and have a good time. Come back and play, mess with each other. And I mean, it was just a, a, just a ton of fun, man. It was just uh, on such a different level. You know, we played for a lot of money, but it wasn't like, you know, considered a true professional sport, right? Right. But, you know, and you're absolutely right by saying that because, you know, so many of my friends are in paintball. And do I do I really get out to see all of them? No. But when I go to tournaments or a big game, that's when I see them. So if that doesn't make paintball special all by itself, nothing does. You know, I, I just think that's absolutely cool as hell. And and paintball has given us all our friends. Or at least, I mean, I think I have like four friends from like middle school, high school that that I'm friends with. Everybody else is all pay, is all through paintball. <laughs> Literally yeah. everybody else. And, and, Every, and what's, nothing wrong with that. No, it's absolutely, no. it's just great. And, you know, my best friends, you know, my best friends I got, I got Keith Kissel out here. He's a very good friend of mine. My One of my best friends, I got three, I can say are really my best friends. And that's Bud Orr, Dan Colby, and Tim Schloss. You know, those three guys, the three of us have hung together forever, you know, and I just, uh, just absolutely love the hell out of those guys, you, man. You got a pretty badass crew of friends. I do, and Gino. Gino's watching us too, so I love Gino. I love you, Gino. I, I was gonna say it, man, but you know, Fred. You know, I'm, I'm glad you got my text. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got you, Gino. Don't worry, man. <laughs> yeah, Gino texted me before the show. He goes, "I'm gonna be watching the show." You know, and I don't know if that was to be on my P's and Q's, keep my mouth shut, or push milk and paintball. I don't know. <laughs> but I love, you know, Gino is one of the, another one of the unsung heroes, you know. I mean, the guy's a gazillionaire and he's got everything, but I wish people could really see what this guy does for paintball behind the scenes, you know. Um, yeah, just like Tracy, Tracy uh, Perez. Perez. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, we helped her with a, a fundraiser, but I didn't know who she was. Who turned me on to her? Gino calls me up. He goes, Freddie, says this girl's having problems, you know, uh, and uh, her doctor bills are getting enormous. Can you do something for her? Hell, we put together a, a little fundraiser, Bill Bailey and I, and we raised almost 7000 bucks for her. Yeah, so, I think I donated a jersey for that one. You did. You did. Yeah. I still got it. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I got to tell you, you know, we've blown through our hour. Um, Billy, I appreciate you taking the time to come on tonight. Um, you know, I'll, I'd like to have you back on again sometime. Yeah, uh, sure. It would be okay with you. Pleasure. Be happy to. Awesome getting to chat with these guys. It's been great. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. it was a great surprise, Fred. <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting that these two to show up. It made it that much better. Well, yeah, some, somebody told me I put these two on, I get the biggest smile that I've ever seen on you. So, and it worked. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hey, man. Yeah, really, yeah, I'm going to let you say goodbye you, to everybody uh, real quick. Adios, y'all. We'll uh, catch you on the flip side. And uh, also, I do have a joust coming up, San Diego, March 2nd. And uh, it's a good time. Velocity Paintball, Ramona, California, March 2nd. Everybody wants to get down and really get on their one-on-one -on -one skills. Show me what you got. Awesome. You get everybody. Right Play paintball. Yeah, hey, See you, uh, Trucker. Stay, stay in touch with me, and I'll help you publicize that. Thank you, brother. Thank you. All right, man. All right. I'll be good. Later, Trucker. Right on. Hey, good guy.
Good guy. He is. Yeah, he's he's a guy. He's a good guy. Yeah, Rick Wilcox uh, got a hold of me and told me, he says, yeah, Freddie, he'd be a good guest with him. And uh, he would, uh, <laughs> he even says, you're welcome right here. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Ricky. Uh, yeah, I sing you text Yeah, that's funny. He's young, he looks like he's 50 years older. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, and then, then we uh, chimed in and he goes, yeah, he says, uh, Billy's a great guy. So, that's why I wanted to hook him up and surprise you tonight, my friend. So, Weiss, you're next. I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. But, uh, buddy, again, you know, I just thanked you a couple of weeks ago for coming on. You know, you have an open invitation to be on this uh, podcast. But I want to thank you again so much for coming on tonight. Yeah, I appreciate it, Freddie. It's always a good time, man. And, you know, getting to talk to all these guys. And, you know, and I, I miss Rock, man. Rock and I go way, way back, man. I mean, yeah, we've been we friends do, for I, a lot I of years, you, man. Yeah, for sure, man. You know, back to the push hey, days. If, if Weez is on, I'll jump back on whenever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there you yeah. go. We can tell you some stories, man, but Rocky. You know, <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. Well, you know, <laughs> some, sometime when we're sitting around the campfire, we'll, we'll <laughs> yes, stop them. Yes. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to lose my G rating. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to lose that either. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But right, always dude. a good time, buddy. You guys take care of yourself. Much love. Much All love, right, Weez. I'll see you, bud. Take, take care. care. All right, everybody. That was Dave Weez Cook, uh, a friend of mine for a very, very long time. Well, Great Rocky. Guy. Hey, buddy, I appreciate you coming on here tonight. Man, I appreciate you having me, Fred. I'll always, you just tell me when, and I'll jump on whenever whenever you want me back on, man. Oh, don't think we aren't going to do this again. Oh, oh yeah. No. Let's, 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 let's do it. I'm not going to yeah. lie. I got I to gotta pace myself during the day because for an East Coaster, you know, 10 o'clock is late for this old man, but yeah, you're, not, you're, not old, you're not old enough yet. You're not old enough yet. <laughs> well, when I got to wake up in one, two, three, four hours to catch my flight, I feel old. I feel old. Oh, you got but, it. Uh, you got it. I, well, Rocky, uh, I appreciate like, it. You know, after, after you do the, um, that down there in Mexico, maybe in a couple of weeks, you jump back on and we'll talk about it. Yeah, for sure. hundred percent. You just, you just, you know, you, you got, we, you got my number, contact me. We'll, we'll talk. I'll jump on if, if I'm available and I'm in, in town or I'm by a computer, I'm all in with you, bud. I'm all, Sounds all good, in. my friend. Well, I'm, I'm looking to hook up with you a lot more in the future here, Rock. Done. Consider it done. I'll let you say goodbye to everybody and let me thank you right off the top for taking the time to come on tonight. Thank you. I appreciate everybody out there watching. It's important. And uh, yeah, just go out and play paintball and uh, play paintball and don't be a dick. You know, <laughs> treat people how you want to be treated, right? You know, there you Let's go. Make this whole thing work. It's a big revolving circle. All right. Don't, I don't I like care you what even kind more of, now. Yeah, I don't care what kind of paintball you play, mag fed, scenario, tournament whatever you as long as you get out there and play and and rep our sport and make us look good you're my friend that's all i got oh, buddy you. i gotta tell you yeah i just love the way you just said that i preach it all the time yeah. rocky again thanks an awful lot you have a safe trip to mexico and i'll be talking to you you got my phone number too call me anytime yep yep um and yep. i'll talk to you in a couple of weeks all right, but I, I appreciate you, Fred, so much. Thank you. Thank you for everything you've done. And along with your awesome crew of friends, you guys really made, you know, paved, paved the way and made made paintball what it is. So I just want to say. I appreciate very you much you saying are, that. Are true, are true legend founders of the sport. And uh, I'll, I'll do whatever you want me to do from getting on, on this to whatever. You just, you just holler at me, man. You, you and I are going to work together in the future on a few things. You watch. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, but yeah, as soon as I get back from Mexico, I'll touch base with you. Sounds good. You have a safe trip. I will. Thank you. All right, brother. Later. All right. Later. All right, everybody. Rocky Cagnoni. What a great interview. What a great person. You know, people wanted me for years to hook up with this guy. And uh, God, I hooked up with him. And I'm, oh, I got chills to the hair on the back of my neck is standing up, you know, because that's the only place there's hair anymore. But other than that, man, I want to thank you all so much for watching tonight. Uh, he was a great guest. I want to thank Weez for coming on. I want to thank uh, Billy Robertson. You know, I appreciate the people that take their time out of their lives to come on my show. And I really appreciate my audience. I can't ever tell you how much uh, you guys uh, 
just how good you guys make me feel. It really is. And I, I know the people who watch this work hard for the sport of paintball, and that just makes me love you that much even more. So until next week, 7 o'clock Pacific time on Facebook, on Flagpole Production, please, everybody, play hard, play safe, play fair, get out there and play paintball. Huh? Bye now.